On today's episode of Locked On Avalanche, we're going to have some morning leftovers from that weekend. Kyle and I were a little bit bitter in yesterday's episode. Is that still holding true after that disaster of a weekend? And we look forward to this playoff series against Winnipeg. New episode, Locked On Avalanche, coming at you. Your Locked On Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Locked On Avalanche Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Chris Maselli. With me, with me as always, Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. Thank you for tuning in and making it your first listen of the day. Always appreciated. Make sure you're following us on our social media outlets, LOP and underscore Avalanche on Twitter X, Locked On Avalanche Instagram and threads, questions, comments, concerns, opinions, Locked On Avalanche at gmail.com. Follow us on YouTube, hit subscribe, get notified when a new show goes live, and subscribe to our subtext as well. Link to that's in the show notes below. And when you do, chat with Kyle and I one-on-one. We share your opinions and everything Avalanche-related on this very podcast, which you're going to want to get signed up for that come playoff time. So a uh, lot's going to be happening there. On today's episode, uh, we're going to kind of look ahead. I know we have one more game left in the, in the regular season, uh, but we're going to look at this playoff series against Winnipeg and break it down by different categories like who has the advantage in offense defense special teams goaltending uh coaching and the intangibles so kind of gonna look at those things individually see where things play out where do abs have the advantage where do they not not gonna do predictions or anything like that right now a little bit too early for that but we'll start with kind of how we've been doing all season long. Just kind of another take on the most recent game or games. If you want to lump the weekend in as one, why not? And, uh, you know, 24 hours removed from that. Are we still uh, you know, Cause when we recorded, you know, the, the, the Monday episode, that was fresh. That was, that was raw. That was, it, it was after a, a, a terrible, how does how's it what's that how's that book go terrible no good very bad horrible weekend yes or whatever order you want to put those terrible words in feel free how are we feeling though another 24 hours removed from that see and the way you're talking like i think we were correctly focused on the outcomes of both games but there was a little bit in the middle um i was yeah let's forget the outcomes for just a second after that after Winnipeg put a touchdown on Colorado, they responded the next day, coming out against Vegas looking relatively good. And that's what you want, a bounce back. That was, I mean, 11 shots in the first, 11 shots in the second, and then you let Vegas have 11 in the third. That's where you let things get away. But that's what you kind of want to respond. Let's forget that third period for just a minute. Right. The Avs answered. That's... And honestly, up until that point, your gift looked okay. And everything was kind of okay for the moment. And I think the avalanche kind of took a breath. Because hmm. again, it is a back-to-back. You and the emotions, the energy, it was momentum was on the avalanche side. And they kind of put that Winnipeg game behind them. And they focused on that game. They didn't look ahead. And in that third period, they honestly just all took a collective sigh of relief and they had one period to go, a long break ahead of them. We got this and you let it go. But the first two yeah. periods, that's that's what you want to see after that embarrassing, honestly, probably one of the worst avalanche games I remember against Winnipeg. That's what you want to see in a response. Uh, it is for 40 minutes. Um, and has my mindset changed it hasn't really kyle and, and i i agree with a lot of what you said right there uh but i i kind of am at the mindset of at this stage in the season and what that meant against winnipeg um it fine it happened you don't want stuff like that to happen fine i actually liked the fact that you didn't have to dwell on that for too long mm. and you could turn right around and and you know atone for that Right. And like you said, they did. They did for for 40 minutes. They were. And I if it was 
you you took your foot off the gas, which I don't think that that was the case. But if it was, why? Why are you doing that? The job is not done. You know, it, it, if it's a normal back to back, we <clears throat> we none of us like back to backs. We say it all the time in back to backs. Like you, you, a third period is very difficult for the team on on a back to back. But for me, there were moments where I forgot the Abs were on a second game of back to back. Not not not, not yeah. saying that like like <clears throat> honestly. Yeah. But it was like, you know, you, you, you were playing for something in this, in, in the second game against Vegas because of what happened the day before. I'm not saying like you forgot about it, but you can't go into that game against Vegas. Like, no, th this is a game that we need to play the full 60 because of what just happened. And they did not, they didn't. And, and I'm still at the point of concern over, over everything. And I think the, it, if if it was not the Jets, uh, maybe the concern wouldn't be as high. Mm -hmm. And and I'm not taking and for me it's matchups and we will get to them. Uh, but how you you know what what you've seen between the Avalanche and the Jets this year, that's kind of where it, it's it my mindset is, and I'm not taking anything away from. From the Dallas Stars because they could, you know, they, they could be the number one seed in the West. Um, it's looking like they could be. If if that was your matchup, I would I would be feeling pretty good because of how you played them during the regular season. So just it, it, all encompassing of, of the whole season between you know matchups and 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 who who the better matchup would be. We said it last week. It would be to me, it's anybody but Winnipeg. You haven't shown that you can play them well. And there are aspects that you can beat them in. Uh, but it, it is going to be a challenge. Stouts would be a challenge. I'm not saying you'd roll over them, but just just going off of that, just going off the matchup, with how you've played your opponent, I would feel more comfortable uh heading into a series against Dallas or or Nashville, or, or even Vegas. How you played Vegas wasn't bad, um, but going in against Winnipeg, you just man, you're you're like, it's doable, but it, it you, you got to be on your game. And see, like I think the concern goes a little bit larger than that because this is going to make half the fan base really proud because everybody likes to go back to that 2022 season. Well, that's great. You know, you remember in the Stanley Cup final, the Avalanche, they had a terrible game against the Lightning. It was embarrassing. Nothing looked good. But what was the thing that everybody got to fall back on? I feel confident in this team because that wasn't Avalanche hockey. And, and they bounced I back. I they dare back. you in this season, define Avalanche hockey. This team, game 81, has not found a consistent identity yet. And with these two possible, like these are playoff matchups, honestly. You're playing, this is preseason playoffs against Winnipeg and Vegas. And you lost in two different disciplines. And you still don't know what this Avalanche team could do. Like we talked about the first 40 minutes of the Vegas game, the entire 60 in the Winnipeg game. That was two different looking avalanche teams. And in the third period of the Vegas game, that was a third avalanche team that came out there. You don't know what this team looks like. There's been hot and cold spans with this team. Kale McCarr has looked good, bad. Taze, good, bad. Nate, four point night, nothing. Miko, two, three point night, nothing. It's yeah. so inconsistent. The Roaring Twenties line, remember that was a thing? Right. They're all over the place. You don't know what you're getting night in, night out, and I don't know what avalanche hockey is right now. I think that's what it is. I think I think you just <laughs> described it. it. It is that you don't know what you're going to get. So in that aspect, should we count them out? No, because you don't. You don't know what, what, what team is going to show up. You hope because it is the playoffs. You rise up for that. The other team does that too. Mm -hmm. The other team rises up well. So which team is just going to rise above it and, and play the better hockey? That you know, it's it's the most difficult playoff in sports. Such a a, a, a difficult series to win, and you got to do it four times to to win a Stanley Cup. The Avs have done it. That was a completely different team than this team right now. You knew the identity of that team. You knew it. That 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 was a a well rounded team, a deep team, defensively, offensively. You got 
uh, serviceable goaltending. Now you get that stuff a little bit here, a little bit there, you know, not all at once. So, you know, you've, I mean, you have seen glimpses of it. The nine game once a month winning streak. Yeah. Like the nine game winning streak, like things were coming together. We felt so good heading into the all-star game. You felt so good. So you've had those moments. And then what follows, like heading into the all-star break, what followed February wiped all that away after the, the, the trade deadline, you had a nice run and a nice winning streak with all these new pieces. You're like, yeah, now we got this together. What's happened recently, the last couple of weeks, wiped all that away. So it's it's been such a polarizing season for this team. So I, I'm kind of just like palms up, and it's like I'm expecting anything. I'm expecting a seven-game series that they win. I'm expecting a seven-game series that they lose. I'm expecting a four-game sweep of them. Uh, I'm really not expecting one by them. I don't think you can – That'd be really, really impressive if they were able to sweep uh, the Jets with with that goaltender. But um, it, it's really just, and I guess in that aspect, Kyle, it, maybe it's a little bit exciting. Maybe for some people that's not, uh, because I know a lot of you know sports fans for their team want to be dominant and just roll over people. I would like that too. Uh, but from a viewership standpoint, this could be an entertaining series. Yeah, you're seeing the best seasons for Kale McCarr, Miko Rantanen, Nathan McKinnon. You're seeing the, this Avalanche team win every way possible and lose every way possible. Yeah. So true. you're completely confident and completely just lost on what this team could bring and detach from the regular season when it's basically a brand new season going into the playoffs. You're optimistic and scared all at the same time on top of that energy that the playoffs bring. So let's look into some uh, different categories between these two teams and where we think uh, the advantages lie between them. Uh, and we're going to do that coming up next. <clears throat> First, let's hear from FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150. Win or lose. So bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Go sign up today. All right. So if you're watching over on YouTube, we're going to have a, <clears throat> a little graphic that we're going to put up let me just adjust some things here there you go so um there it is all right so there's what we're gonna kind of look at right now we're gonna do offense defense special teams goaltending coaching and the intangibles all of the things that maybe don't show up on the stat sheet and maybe things that do show up on the stat sheet face-offs uh so we'll we'll, we'll kind of go through these one at a time and obviously we'll start with the offense <clears throat> We know what the Avalanche can do offensively. They they are the best offensive team in the league uh, in terms of goals uh, per game. But when you know you, you can you can you can roll that stat out. But just look at the offensive ability that this team has. Right. Obviously, you have Nathan McKinnon. Obviously, you have Miko Rantanen on the defensive end. Kale McCarr pitches in clearly on offense. Um, you have Val Nachuskin, who is just a force up front. Uh, Archery Lekkinen, who is, 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 you know, he's coming into his own, obviously, offensively, and he's great on the four check, as is Val Nachuskin. Um, they're, they're just a offensively sound, uh, maybe better than sound, uh, close to offensive juggernaut of a team. The Colorado Avalanche, yes. Yes, they are. They have that top line. They have two players with triple digits and points. And Kale McCarr has 89, which, as a defenseman, has more than the leading point getter for the Winnipeg Jets. I know. Which, this, it's wonderful. It's astounding. But the Jets score like Vegas last year. It's all throughout the roster. They, they know how to share. And yeah. you get yeah. all four lines working for the Jets when, honestly... If the top line isn't doing it for the Colorado Avalanche, it's an uphill battle. 
It is. Um, you know, for, for Winnipeg, like you said, Mark, Mark Scheifele is, is their leading point score with 70 points. And he's played 73 games. They do not have a player on this team that's a point per game player, but that's just fine by them yeah. because it just, you're right, it, it goes up and down the lineup. Um, from an offensive, like what, what you want from an offensive team, like they're, they're fine <clears throat> not matching up and beating your top line with their top line offensively. They feel comfortable that they can shut an offensive team down defensively, you know, a, a top line and really all throughout the other team's lines that they can shut them down. But from an offensive standpoint, I don't I don't think you can deny that the the Avalanche are the better team here offensively. They can just put points on the board quickly um, through, you know, and we'll get to special teams in a minute, but they're a powerhouse. They are an offensive powerhouse. So I, to me, I think the the uh, point here goes to to the Avalanche for the offense, unless you disagree with that. No, I, I completely agree. But the thing with the Avalanche, they are knockout fighters. They are knockout mm -hmm. punch deliverers. The Jets, they will take you all 10 rounds. Sure. They will, oh, they can take it. They will go all day. As long as they can withstand the knockout punch, they can get you. If the Avalanche can't knock out, throw that knockout punch, it's 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 going to be a battle. Can they go mm -hmm. 10 rounds? Don't look at the Vegas game. Avalanche 3.67 goals per game. I'll win a, that's number one. Winnipeg. A little bit less than uh, halfway through the the teams are at three point one four per game, and I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but just it, you know, I, and it is over the course of a season, it is, but uh, it's really on display for the Avalanche. Exciting offensive yeah. team, defense. Um, it, this 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 was a difficult one because at the beginning of the season, you you just felt good about where the Avalanche were defensively. And they have clearly struggled uh, through this this season on defense, where the Jets uh, defensively are, are the the best team in the league in terms of goals against average. They are a very sound, solid defensive team. And see, that's the thing here. We're talking. We just talked offense. Now we're talking defense playing defense. And if you want defense <laughs> playing defense, that's Winnipeg Jets. It is. If you want defense giving you offense, we just talked about Kale McCarr. But it's Josh Morrissey for the Winnipeg Jets. Like they, they know how to play defense. They know how to make your life miserable. And Winnipeg, they take the cake when it comes to defense. They do. Um, they, they have defensive guys. If if you want to talk about the the offensive abilities of their defensemen, it's just fine. It, it's mm -hmm. it, they're they're not liabilities. They pitch in. Morrissey is the leader of the pack by far. Um, all of them are well, well, there's a couple that are in, in the plus single digits, but you have like Dylan De, uh, DeMello, who's plus 43. Josh Morrissey's a plus 33. Uh, Dylan Sandberg is a plus 16. Uh, Brendan Dillon is a plus 19. So they are out there when it counts. And uh, offensively, they can pitch in. Defensively is where they excel. So uh, th this is one of those what wins out. And this is where I like to have a defensive team because, yep. as uh, you know, all through me watching sports, uh, defense, it, it wins championships. I know that that's a, a, a tired saying, but it is true. And it is, it is shown and it is proven. So the Avalanche have to figure out a way to crack this defense because uh, for, for the Jets, it is tough, and they are good. And when you have uh, three solid defensive units and then an all-world goaltender, that spells trouble for, for your opponent. Yeah, because they focus on defense. It's Josh Morrissey with 67 points, and then your next top-scoring defender has 31 points. That's Dylan DeMello. Like, yeah. they play defense first, and then they score if they need to. Right. The Avs score it because they have to. Yeah, the Avs rely on their defensive defensemen to pitch in offensively way more than the Jets do. Yeah. It has two different styles. Really, it's two different styles. Uh special teams, mainly uh power play and um penalty kill. Th this is really all avalanche. Um Avs, let's put that up there. A Avs are one of the better power play teams. Penalty kill, it's been good all season long. It's been bad as of of recent. 
but overall it is still a, a very good penalty kill where Winnipeg surprisingly in both of those aspects struggle. It's, and it goes back to that knockout punch power. You give them avalanche an advantage. They will take advantage of that. And the penalty kill up until recently has been okay. And it's been really good. And the Winnipeg just can't get it together on special teams. And you hope that is an advantage. But again, in a playoff type environment, whether you're home or away, that could lead to an advantage on the special teams. And Colorado has the upper hand there. Absolutely. Uh, Colorado's power play is uh, 24 and a half percent. Uh, one, two, three, four, that's sixth. And Winnipeg's is 19, which is like 27th. So that's for power plays. Penalty kills. Uh, the Avalanche are 80.2 percent. And and Winnipeg, where is it here? Where is it here? Why can't I find it? You have to it's look over good. Hartford. It's not good. And oh, uh, 77.2, 77.2. Yeah. So they struggle. They struggle. So, so that is a key. That is a key to get yourself on uh, power plays for this team, for, for this series. Somehow, some way, draw penalties. Nathan McKinnon needs. Uh, and while you hung up there and frozen, see how these stats are leaning and where these tallies are going. When it comes to offense and having the upper hand, the Avalanche, Just they deep. have the tools to do it. And as you see, when it comes to slowing things down, things are starting to tilt towards Winnipeg. So you see the the divide beginning to happen right here. All right, I'm back. Uh, all right, so that's what we got. We got uh, offense goes to the Avalanche. Defense goes to the Jets. Special teams go to the Avs. So we got goaltending, coaching, and intangibles. So uh, let's take our last break here and then come back with those. And we'll do that right after this. Let's hear from Sleeper. And we are continuing to find the better app for daily fantasy sports other than sleeper kyle any luck yet no <laughs> nothing in that pen no. no uh so why because sleeper is the official daily fantasy app of locked on nhl and it's our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with sleeper you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests we got uh one person i think you said ross colton uh, but we, we have, we have some time off between these two games. So let's get a bonus player in here. Who you got? Hey, Casey Middlestead. Come on, buddy. Uh, yeah, it's time. All right. I, I like it. So all I have to do is pick whether studs like Casey Middlestead will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus minus, and more in a given game. So use a promo code locked on NHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That code is locked on NHL C sleepers terms of use for details and locational availability. All right. So let's uh, dive back into these. Uh, where are we here? Here we go. Those categories. That's where we left off with special teams. So um, heading into goaltending, I don't think this is really debatable. Um, even, even if Georgiev was having a, a, solid season um let's say his last year had just carried over into this year even if he improved on that a little bit for my money Con connor hellebuck is 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 an exceptional goaltender we, we touched on it before the jets game uh he gets his due and he gets his credit and he is known as one of the top three goaltenders in this league but it just seems like when when people want to talk about those top three goaltenders, it's always you know Shosturkin, Vasilevsky, and and Hellebuck's in there too. Where for my money, Connor Hellebuck is right now the best goaltender in in the NHL, and I feel like he has been over the past couple of years. Uh, he 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 is tough to beat. And honestly, this current version of Connor Hellebuck. Name me a Colorado Avalanche goalie that's not named Patrick Waugh that you would feel comfortable in goal against right now. Ooh, man. Um, I mean, th there's years that guys have had, individual years, um, like the Semyon Varlamov uh, season that he had. That, that was good. But even that, 
it, it is 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 not is that's the closest I think you're going to come to how good Connor Hellebuck is. Yeah, because this is the year that everybody's saying this is a Vesna year for him. Like this is the year that we talk about. Like he finally gets his due. This could be Nathan McKinnon when it comes to the heart and him getting his due and his hardware. This could be Connor Hellebuck's year, deservedly so. And uh, honestly, a little bit too long on that. Connor Hellebuck, it could be up there in heart trophy yeah. voting. I mean, as far as the Vesna, I, I think he's got to have that at least um but he he could be I, I don't think he'll be in the top three um for heart but it, it's it's possible he's been that good um he is 36 19 and four overtime uh losses 2.38 goals against his save per, uh, percentage is uh point uh nine two two it's 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 just elite level it's elite level stuff and and when on the other end when that is the big question mark for the avalanche and it is the absolute farthest thing from a question mark on the jet side of thing that that is short up for them that is one thing they do not have to worry about at all they know however many games this goes connor hellbucks and goal and for the avalanche it's we don't know what's going to happen from game to game. This, this is where this series is going to be decided. I don't think there's really in the special teams. If you can get uh power plays, if you don't very tough to beat this team. Yeah. Look at this graphic right now, that offense up there that screams avalanche, this goaltending that screams Winnipeg. This is the matchup of the series. What breaks first? It's tough. And, and, you know, and next one up is coaching. Um, you know, you got Rick Bonus, obviously, and Jared Bednar. Um, to me, I, I like Rick Bonus. I mean, nothing I against too. Rick Bonus. I like him. I, I feel like he, he's, he's a good coach. Um, when I was looking up his, his, his record, I was a little bit surprised at, you know, how kind of poor it is. Um, but and for Jared Bednar, it, it's just been all with the exception of that first season. Um, but that's not where we're coming into play here. Like th this is just this year. Um, I still give it to Jared Bednar. I still just mm -hmm. feel like he he is uh, a, a, a player's coach. I know some people harp on him for not making adjustments. I feel like he does. I feel like he's very good at making adjustments. He's not afraid to switch up the lines on the fly. Um, I don't know if the Jets do that a, a ton, but I know Jared Bednar does, and he's not afraid to do it, and he does. He does make adjustments. I know people think that he doesn't, but he's very good at doing it. So I, I lean Jared Bednar here for, for the coaching part of it. Yeah, I lean Jared Bednar here because of hardware, but honestly, Rick that Bonus too, yeah. is evil timeline Jared Bednar. He is also a player's coach. He knows how to fire up his team. Like his record doesn't show it, it but doesn't. every team that he is at the helm of, they love Rick Bonus. He sure. he loves his team. He puts out the best team, but however difficult that has to be when it comes to coaching decisions, Bonus does it. And I'm giving it to Bednar, not being burgundy and blue glasses here. Bednar has proven it. He's done yeah. it. And this team also sells out for Bednar. So I'm going to give it to Bednar here. Um, I mean, we, we could, if we wanted to put a, a logo on each side of this, mm. but, I, but, I, but I, you know, like you said, he's got the hardware, obviously crazy enough bonus is coached in 108 games. He's 308, 408, uh, 48 ties and then 37 overtime losses. This per, his uh, win percentage is a 0.438. That's pretty, that's not the greatest. Um, so like I said, 801 games coach, he's got 308 wins where Bednar has surpassed that, that wins in far fewer games. So Bednar's dialed in, he, yeah. he, you know what I mean? So, uh, we're, we're going Jared Bednar in that aspect and then the intangibles. And that is everything. Um, uh, not, not these things that we talked about here, the things that don't show up on, on the stat sheet, um, but like I said in the beginning, some things that do in, in terms of what hits, 
uh, face-off percentage wins and stuff like that, which never fav- favors the Avalanche. How the Jets have matched up with the Avalanche this year, they do all of that stuff to a T. And that's where I think Rick Bonus comes into play here for them is they have he he knows this team and he know he knows the perfect system to for them to play and he doesn't try to overextend them. They do they do everything well. They don't play a, a, an, an incredibly fast game. They're fast enough, but they're big. They're strong. They went where where it really jumped out to me, Kyle, was the 50-50 against the boards. They mm-hmm. win them all, it seems like. So when the Avs do this dump and chase and and get into the zone, if the Jets are there, they're not going to win that battle. And in, in the offensive zone, the Jets are going to win and go in the opposite direction. They're really good at playing a just technically sound game. God, that was on display. But the last, all three of the games that they played against them this year, they do. They're in the right place at the right time. Like I said, just watch the the battles against the boards. They're so good at winning them because they're just big, and the Avalanche are not. So you're, they're going to get bodied, and the Jets will win those boards against the battles, and then regain possession. It's going to be tough. And the thing with the Jets, you want to talk about the Avs being kind of forgotten about and left out in mainstream media. Like Gary Bettman had to go up there and talk about season ticket sales in Winnipeg because it was such an issue. You want to talk about a little market, a tiny market? Hey, by the way, this used to be the Thrashers. Like, for goodness sake, <laughs> like this team, for everything they are, going back to Rick Bonus, this is a good team that believes yeah. in what they do night in, night out, that you know what Winnipeg Jets hockey is going to be, and you have to stack up to that. The Colorado Avalanche are a good roster, a good team of good players, but they haven't figured out who they are. Rick Bonus has this team believing in what they do and the talent that they do. You see it in points. You see it in their hustle. Night in, night out, even doesn't matter how big, how loud the crowd is, they will perform because they believe in this team. The Avalanche, they're emotional. You'll you Like we talked about in the first segment, you've seen them win and lose in so many fashions. The Jets, they do what they do. They're blue collar and they sell out for themselves. And you touched on, um, you know, the arena and uh, they struggle with ticket sales. People will show up because it's a playoff series. Mm-hmm. And, it, and and it's, you know, looking like the Jets will have the home ice for this. That can be a tough place to play. They got the white out. Everybody's wearing the white. Like that, that, that arena is going to be rocking. Avs are used to that. I mean, you know, you, you, you go you play a Stanley Cup final in Tampa, you know, that that's a difficult place too. But um, in last year, they had to go through it with Seattle. Anywhere you go when it comes to playoff hockey and you're in an enemy territory, it's going to be difficult. But that is another thing that's another just added intangible that the Avalanche are going to have to weather here. <clears throat> So there's no sugarcoating this. People like it's it's going to be tough. It's it's going to be tough. You have advantages. Your offense is an advantage. Your your special teams is an advantage. They have advantages too. And obviously their defense, clearly their goaltending. So that's going to be the the collide here. Which one wins out? To me, more often than not, defense and goaltending is where you need it. But if the Avalanche can figure it out, if they can figure out how to win those battles to, to, in, in, uh, along the boards, how to just keep offensive possession in, in their offensive zone, figure out a way to crack Hellebuck. These are all a laundry list of things that you got to figure out how to do. It's going to be a tall order. I have, I have confidence in them, uh, but I also know that, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's a haul. It's going to be a long haul, but it should be exciting. This is low-key probably going to be one of the best matchups in the opening round for the Western Conference because this is power, flash, and speed versus the intangibles, the grit, and the essentials, and the fundamentals of play. This is tortoise and the hare. This is Porsche versus a Sherman (laughs) tank. This is like your two disciplines of hockey, the old school way or the new way of hockey, put in a seven-game series. You can't get any better than this. I think that's a good way to put Like the The Avalanche are exciting. Like when you watch them, they're fast, they're flashy, they can put put points on the board. Winnipeg is we're gonna I don't want to say slow things down, but we're just gonna do things technical. 
Mm-hmm. And it might not be fun to watch, might not be exciting, but it wins games. And isn't that what it's all about anyway? No matter how you get there, doesn't matter if you do it the Avalanche way or the Winnipeg way, a win is a win is a win. So the the, the Jets are going to do things their way. The Avalanche are going to do things their way. And we'll see who outlasts the other. Winnipeg is what the Islanders have been trying to be for the last 10 years. Oh, God. And can't figure it out for some nope. reason. So... All right, that is going to wrap it up for today, everybody. Thank you for tuning in and making your first listen of the day. We won't have an episode tomorrow. I have to go to a Pearl Jam listening party, believe it or not. New album's coming out on Friday. I have a Taylor Swift one coming up. Uh, Do you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, My my brother and I are heading to an advanced Pearl Jam yeah, uh, record listening part. So very excited about that. So, awesome. um, yeah, so we won't have an episode tomorrow, but we'll be back the day after that. Discuss anything going on as related. Get ready for this uh, finale against Edmonton. Until then, he is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. I am Chris Maselli. This is the Locked On Avalanche podcast. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. And we'll see you guys later.